Charlie. Yeah, they had their spats. <laughs> but see, Louie and Nicky, the way I was tall, I never seen it. I was just taught when they were at the destruction age. The way I understand it, Louie and Nicky used to tease your father. And that's, uh, that's how they worked on him. Learn pretty much with him, I guess. <laughs> well, I don't know. See, I wasn't around. I was just. Uh, I mean, knowing him as I knew him growing up myself. He was all right teasing, but he wasn't too good at uh, taking it. Well, it all the way I looked at your father, <coughs> it was who the person was that was teasing, whether he liked it or not. Certain people, yeah. certain people yeah. could say anything to him and take it. And, uh, and the mood he was in. No, the even, even the mood. It, it, if it was certain ones, he, you know, you could almost say anything mm -hmm. to him. But if it was somebody that he had doubts about, uh, he had to be careful yeah. what he said. No, I know um, what I mean is now, like us kids, if you might be able to clown around, joke around with you, but don't catch him in the wrong mood. Oh, yeah, I know Whoa. what you mean there, yeah. Then the same thing that you said yesterday, try it today, and boy, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we generally got to where we knew not to joke with him too much because we didn't know what mood he was going to be in. <laughs> well, after a while, you could judge. You could, yeah. sense. You could sense, you know. If it was around a time when bills were due and they... Uh, oh, yeah, stay away from them. <laughs> and stay away from any parents, I guess, in that, yeah. in that situation. Yeah. But uh, he, he had his ups and downs. Yeah. So we got off the subject last night about Grandma and Grandpa. You were telling us about her farm and... Well, yeah. from the stories that she had told us that I remember, that uh, the people in the town brought their stuff there to be, uh, like the wheat would be brought there to be thrashed out into flour. To her farm. On her farm. Because they see her parents had all the mechanism there. Mechanism, just horse driven. Like where they crush the olives Mills. to make oil. Well, they horses or a bull, I don't know what they use. And, and that would go round and round in the rocks. The rolling rock would crush the the olives and converted the oil and stuff. She used to explain all that to us. You know. But on her farm, they had lemon orchards, oranges, uh, plums, uh, they had quite a number. Grapes? I don't know if they had grapes. Olives? See, olives, yeah, they had that. That was the big thing there. They had wheat. They had everything. And they had cows. That's where they, this was in Italy, Sicily. And they, that's where they got their source of milk. Well, she was from Sicily also. What town was she from? My mother. What town yeah, was she, she was from? Yeah, the one um, near Messina, Catania, they call it. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a, it's yeah, a it had, it had little been. town off of the Messina. Messina was, take like Bradford, it's a big town here, yeah. right? Then you got towns surrounding it. Well, no, small towns. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, such and such town. They call them provinces. But over there they call them province of, uh, I guess their mayor or whatever it was, was in the scene in these little towns like where my mother lived. They came under the, the mayor of uh, the town of the scene. See, Sicily has, doesn't have too many big towns. It's like, um, Palermo, Catania, Messina, and, well, I forgot them all, but they didn't have too many. But it's a big island, but there's a, a lot, lot of mountains. A lot of mountains, and there's a lot of waste because of that volcano. See, when that erupts, destroys a lot of land. And, uh, Which volcano is this? Mount Etna. The Mount. <laughs> the Mount Etna. The, the big one. Yeah, so, that's so uh, she was from Messina. She was educated. Yeah, she was from. They no one went to school in them days. Well, See, she... that's what aggravated my father. His father, when my father became of age, 
his father sent him to school. Then when his father died, his mother remarried and uh, took him out of school. He went to school just long enough to learn how to write his number and add figures and things like that. And he argued with his mother and his stepfather that he wanted to stay in school. And his stepfather said, no, we need you on a farm around here. So they wouldn't let him go to school, and that's when he took off and ran off. And I guess that's when he went to work on my mother's farm, my mother's father's farm. And that's how I guess he got to know my mother. So. But oh, then, I thought they used to match marriages back then. Not in my mother's case. No, no. Because uh, I don't think when uh, when, they, when he married my mother, I don't think it was a thing of matching because he wasn't from that area. He was from another area. Mm. Yeah, but you know, she didn't have formal education, but you said she kept the books and all, so she must have learned Well, somewhere. the books, the way they kept them them days was uh, you had to memorize them. I mean, my mother had a good memory. Because when they came here, and the neighborhood we were living in, uh, she didn't. Uh, there was no Italian uh, store to sell like Italian cold cuts and things like that. So my father opened up a store there, and uh, would get the. What year was this? In the twenties, the early twenties, right after World War One, and uh, they had the store for quite a while. But then a lot of people, you know, would come buy something, they put it on the book. And then at the end of the week or whenever, they had to come around and pay up. A lot of them weren't paying up. They are taking advantage of my people. But my brother could memorize oh, quite a few people. Say, so, well, so-and-so was in the day and bought this and this. And then it was either my sister many or Louis or whoever, would write the numbers down in the books. Well, so and so owes so much. And that's how the books were kept. But my mother had such a memory, but when it was transactional money, all the adding she did in her mind. Say somebody come in and bought something and the bill comes, say, to three dollars and twenty six cents. And they would hand her a five dollar bill. She knew just how much change to get. She could count money good. That's what I mean, she had to learn mm -hmm. how to count things yeah. like that somewhere. That came through, well, she didn't go to school for it, but it just came through uh, dealing with people. Yeah. Maybe her parents taught her? Could be, could be, but they didn't, they didn't teach her the, the figures of American money. She had to learn that when she came here. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are so kerosene. People in them days had kerosene heaters. So we had a 50-gallon tank, and Texaco would come every so often and fill that tank with kerosene. Well, in days, kerosene sold like for eight, nine cents a gallon. So somebody would come and say, I want two gallons of kerosene. So we'll say eight cents a gallon. So my mother would say 16 cents. She knew how to, if they hand her a quarter, she knew how much change she had to give, you see. She learned that real, real good. And yeah. You could pull no wool over her. She was fast and pretty. Her father was much faster than figuring. Because he had a little bit of that schooling where he learned figuring. So. And then. Uh, now, what town was he from? Uh, the, um, well, they didn't know that. No, with him, he was the one who was from Nassau, the Capelon. All right, and we. See, I forgot it. Nassau de Capelon. Nassau, yeah. Nassau. All right, and then it was my mother that was... And your mother, I don't know, that was, now Mary didn't remember. Well, she knew it was a uh, province in Messina. Messina, yeah. Italy. Well, I now now it's comes from, I think my father came from the town called Nassau. I used to call it Nose. In uh, Italian, Nassau means a nose. Oh. So, uh, uh, And your mother. You know, if I there. had a map, I could tell because I still remember my father always saying something about, about Palermo. That's the, I think that's the capital of Sicily. Mm -hmm. And I used to hear my father say a lot about Palermo. Now, he could have came from that city. Mm -hmm. So, but there, 
their romance then started when he was working on, on, her a farm, farm. on her parents' farm. Yeah, and then, uh, like I said, when he met, when my sister Rose was going to get married to Tony, and we went to Glassboro the first time to meet the parents, here, friends of his that was in the same town in Sicily, lived about a block away from where my father, from where Tony family lived. From the boarding town? In, in the glass bar. Oh, so, was that where he lived originally? Tony, yeah. 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 So, uh, I used to drive my father over there all the time, you know. So one time they had a great big dinner. Oh, it was a beautiful hot day, you know, and had a dinner out there, and they had enough food there to feed an army. That's how much they cooked. Well, they had everything on a farm, chicken, pigs, lamb, you name it. And when they cooked the meal, it, when everybody was there, it would be chicken, would be lamb, would be pork. I don't know how people could eat so much food, but it was there. But uh, when they, when Tony's parents says so and so lives a couple blocks down the road, he's got his own little farm there. Let's go visit him. Well, they were like, well, my father and this other fellow his age met. They were like two little kids, never never seen each other for so many years. Well, that's the way it was. Then they would get talking and they're drinking, you know. So this guy would say to my father, he says, hey, Tony, you remember this? And he's going, <laughs> <laughs> So coming home, you know, my old man's pretty well lit up, you know. I says, hey, Pop, why don't you go like that? I'll tell you someday, he says, I'll tell you. But Sammy pumped it out of him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he would. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he says, you did have your playing over there. Well, let's not get into that, my old man. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, that. But Sammy pumped a lot out of him more. I never cared to pump it. It didn't bother me, you know. But uh, the only thing, like I said, which got me when he went, <laughs> when old man went, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so we would tease my mother, you know. Did you know about it? She said. So my mother said, "Well, it takes a little while to find out things, but." It's like any other time, he says, when you know somebody's doing something, you know it. So, mm -hmm. if you want to disturb your family, you bring it up. If you don't want it to disturb you, you don't bring it up. So she was one that, uh, it happened, it happened. You know, yeah. she, she never uh, contradicted anything like that. But other than that, my mother was content. And... Uh, her main thought was to raise the family the best she could, which she did. She did all that she could. And uh, from the 20s went into the 30s, and that was the downfall of everybody's life. And the Depression came, hit everybody, and knocked everybody out of work. No jobs, no money. And everybody had to pitch in to do the best they can. And, uh, yeah, it's about the time I was born, 34. You were born in 34? So that uh, things were still rough. They, they were, were rough in war for quite a while. They were rough even after the war ended, say, like, see, the war ended in 46. Yeah. Things really weren't good because 46, 47, 48, that's when, in 48, the wages started to go up. Now, labor used to pay 35 cents an hour. Uses. All during the 30s. And then, it, right after the war, mm -hmm. labor went up to, like, 50 cents an hour. Oh, man, that was good. Yeah. But then it was climbing fast. So, I was still working at Frankfurt Arsenal when I come back from the service, but I only stayed there about four months and then I quit. I come out because I had gotten into this job to set and tile. So <clears throat> when I got into that, my salary was a dollar an hour. Was, oh, cow, eight bucks a day. You know, <laughs> 40 bucks a week. Boy, this is good. Sounds good, yeah. yeah. And uh, in fact, it was good because there was no there's no social, uh, 
What was taken out? Social Security was the only thing taken out. Yeah, you didn't have any. There was no taxes, no taxes. wage taxes or anything. Well, they had them, but you weren't covered by them at that level. No, they wage. took it. The first $12 was all that was free of taxes. The first 12 Anything over that was taxable. And according to whether you're single or married or... So, <clears throat> but what struck me when I got... Well, my job went up to, you know, with the pays were going up every year. So I don't know, it was, it was two years, three years went by. The first pay I come home with of uh, over a hundred dollars. I says, oh my God. Feel like you were rich, huh? I says, I didn't believe this day was, was ever going to come around, or I didn't even believe that I was would be a day that I'd go home with a hundred dollars a week. Was it 47, 46, About, uh... I think it was more like in the early 50s. Yeah, probably. Because you could still go to store and with $20, $25, you could buy enough food last year. Oh, yeah. Two weeks. And I'm saying food, yeah. uh, laundry material, all that stuff. The only thing you would have to run back for now and then would be like bread and milk. Bread and milk. So, but the other than that, geez, you could buy meat was still selling like... Uh, it went up, but it was still selling like for say forty nine cents a pound for steak, something like that. Like now, you compare, you know, you get mm -hmm. a good piece of steak, you're going to pay four or five dollars a pound. A good mm -hmm. steak, if you want to get the other kind, that's just like two and three dollars, whatever. And then it's before you know, that's when we started to get greedy. Oh heck, we made a hundred dollars. Why can't we make more? And, and that, that was, more that was the, and to me, I think that was a downfall of the country when we knew through the through the union that you can get more and more and more. So. Mm -hmm. You're talking about overtime? No, regular, yeah, regular salary. Yeah, regular salary. 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 Getting so, raises and raises, asking for higher and higher wages. It was, it was no problem to it. I think the contractors and the business people <coughs> They were afraid not to agree with the unions. Well, you're talking about the 50s? Yeah. Well, it was I'm a Korean War then. They were probably making a lot of stuff in the war. But the well, it wasn't that so much. Well, the, the, that really didn't stir up. But there was uh, military work going on. So we had a lot of military bases. Mm -hmm. Like now they want to close them. They were still all in full swing. And people mm -hmm. were being drafted yet. They had to serve a year or whatever it was. That was the big thing. Oh, when you say you're getting greedy, you're talking about the unions were getting greedy? I, well, um, I'm one of them, you know. The, the union people. says, well, mm -hmm. we can get this. Well, let's get it. Let's get Between it. Between the you raises and the, and the benefits. So before you know it, you're coming home with clear 200 a week. Then, you know, you're coming home with 300 a week. Mm -hmm. And the then prices then, kept going up, too. Yeah. Oh, everything Wages went up. Wages went up, prices went yeah, up. Yeah, that food got out of hand. What was it like in the 30s? How old were you in the 30s? Well, I see I was born in 17, so 27 I was 10, 37 I was 20. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like at the time of the Depression, you know, you well, about the, the all the 30s. Well, we all heard, the 30s. 30s We've always heard about how you guys all had to work collecting metals before school and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what you're talking about. Were you selling about. apples in the 30s? No, years? I didn't do that. I mean, did they do that? They, they did that, but I don't know how they could make money because you go buy a bushel of apples, they used to come in a box wrap. Mm -hmm. And they were nice looking apples, each separately wrapped, and they would sell them like for five cents. And if he, he's got apples, and then he'd be selling pouches, like three for ten cents. You mean you bought the apples or you, raised, or you grew the apples? Oh, no, you bought them. Where are you going to grow well, apples? I didn't know. Those seeds? No, you went down <laughs> no, and you bought them. bushels. In oh, other words, in, Tom, oh, yeah. you weren't there. <laughs> like each apple probably, uh, if you figured out each apple in a box, you figured it cost you about two and a half, three cents. Well, let's put it this way. When my father was making a lemonade, he used to go down and get a carton of lemons now. It's about this long, the carton, about this high, and about this wide. Three dollars. Now, I don't know how many dozens of lemons, and there had to be at least 12 dozens of lemons in there. Now they sell, yeah, they still sell lemons by the, like, four for a dollar, three for a dollar, whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> but he knew how to pick the lemons. 
So you go to the store today, you see lemons, they look so nice, but the skin is so thick, and when you get inside of them, they're dry, there's nothing in them. Mm, tomatoes are the same way. Yeah, so he knew how to pick lemons, you know. The thinner the skin means more inside and the juicier. Because yeah. I remember one time we were overseas and uh, the chief and I went down to the commissary and they pick up some stuff. So the chief says, look at that, a carton of lemons. So he got his requisition slip right, slip right away and he put on their lemons. Because whatever's on a slip, that's what you would get. And you had to have it on it. You couldn't ask for it say, I want that. They wouldn't give it to you. This is a naval depot in England. So we saw that. I don't know if there's two or three of them saw there. I know we've got more than one. But the things look, wasn't much more bigger than, um, I would say, half the size of a cue ball or a pool ball. Hmm. But there was small. So uh, he. He put it on a slip and we got them out. It was two or three cartons. They were the tastiest lemons and juicy. And once you open it, you could sense this, the aroma of lemon. Like from here to, to where that coffee pot is, you could sense it from that far away. That's how strong it is. Mm. So we did a stupid thing. Where you hear this? I stole about 20 lemons from the garden. And we were invited to a dance. Now we were, here's the, here's the road, and the English Channel came right up to the road. Because, you know, England cleaned it out that way so a ship can pull in. And uh, they came down, and a lot of times it'd be 10, 20 ships lined up there. So the people that uh, entertained, like the USO, but it mm -hmm. wasn't called USO, it was another name over there. They said, uh, we're having a dance tonight, and all the servicemen are invited, free. It was a great big hall, you know. So we all got dressed and we went up there. But we took about 20 or 30 lemons with us. They're so small, you know, you could put them in your pocket and nobody know you got them. So the dance is going on and we're having a good time, but the only thing you could drink was beer. And you had to drink a gallon of it before you start to feel anything. It was more like near beer than any, you know, oh, beer without... That, that near beer stuff. It too. had alcohol in it, but it wasn't enough to, to yeah. move you, you know. So we're standing in front of the van. About eight or ten of us. And cut the lemons in half, and we're sucking the lemons. But like I said, the aroma, you could sense it. Here the band couldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> their mouth was getting water. Sure. You know, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't blow their instruments, you know. So we got thrown out. They threw us out, you know. Because their mouths just started salivating and they couldn't. See, the English, they're, they're very dedicated to their music. They are good musicians. Well, they were eating the lemons, too? You mean no, no, we were in front just of them. The, just the, the smell uh, of it. Don't your mouth get water if somebody eats a lemon in front of you? You haven't you done see it. See them eating a lemon and, and your salivary glands start to go into overtime. And you can't talk, you know. And you're, oh, you yeah. get all And here these poor guys trying to blow their instruments and <laughs> whatever was happening to their mouth, they couldn't do it. And they were complaining, these guys eat lemons in front of us and, <laughs> and we got thrown out. <laughs> so they wouldn't let us oh. back in, so we had to go elsewhere to uh, have fun for that night. We'd go to a pub, and the pubs are always crowded. Some of the pubs we were welcome, some we were not welcome. You know, they didn't like the Americans, especially if you were a Navy. Mm -hmm. They accepted the Army, but they didn't accept the Navy, most of the people. So we'd go in there and suck on this lemon. <laughs> Before you know it, be fights. <laughs> but I never got in got involved in any scrap and you know, as soon as I see there was going to be a fight I took off. Because a lot of people like it. I never interest me. How how much truth is there to what I heard? I don't know what the details are. I'm not even sure where I heard heard about it. That grandpa started selling water ice and Rosati copied it and then made it Nah I don't think that's he true. Make, I heard did that he used to make popsicles, Rosati? Rosati made what they called uh, um, 
shaved. He made ice. he made the the water ice Rosati. But did he also mm. make the popsicles? Yes, he made the I, popsicle I, too. That's what I recall. But uh, he made uh, his stuff was more creamier and made with artificial. Did flavor. he make it first or or at, at the grandpa? Or well, he, he was only a kid when grandpa was making it, wasn't he? No, Rosati. Oh no, the old man Rosati and my father are about the same. Oh, age. they're about the same. Oh, the father age. started. Not, oh not yeah, same not the no, not the oh, I didn't No, the father started. Mm -hmm. It could have been he started it first, the Rosati, and uh, he that they all started making water ice the same way my father was making it. That was the traditional thing. Mm -hmm. That was brought over from Italy. Though. The other reason yeah. I asked, remember you're talking about three finger jack? Yeah. The well, three finger jack tells. Yeah, your grandfather used to water it down. <laughs> no, no, he's wrong. Man. Well, I don't know. Be, <laughs> see, I know what he meant by that. See, one type is a, what they call a sherbet. Uh -huh. So you're putting something else in it and that gives it a premier That's look. what they called yum yum? They, well, they thought they had to, they thought they were the first to come out with that word yum yum. yum, yum. And they had a trademark. They got that as their trademark. And no one was on it? Yeah. Oh, and no one could use that. But uh, now his no. was his. Uh, he went commercial afterwards. He put a couple of machines in his garage back there, and he started making it and selling it to different shops. My father didn't do it. My father just stayed with the traditional water ice. Yeah. But his was more like a sherbet. Like you go into a supermarket and you buy a sherbet, and it's premium. And now what does sherbet have? A little a cream in it. Ice cream syrup. It was stiff, Which? Rosati's. Well, no, he froze it. Well, that's what I mean. But the way he marketed it, that's the way he froze it. It was stiff. That's the way he scooped it, it out. Yeah, it's a. Grandpa's it's a, wasn't like that. No, but grandpa, uh, that's why it was called water ice. Now, you go to supermarket, they don't call it water ice; they call it Italian ice. Yeah. yeah. But actually, it's sherbet. What uh, like these big ice cream companies make it? Now, I don't know who they copied it off of, but Rosati was one of the first in the West Philadelphia area. And now, how far from Grandpa did Rosati live? Half a block. Yeah, he just lived down the end yeah. there, right? He was on that little street, wasn't it? Summer, Summer street. street. Yeah. yeah. See, I was going with his, with his son, and his name was Charlie, too. In fact, there was three of us who stood together, and we were all named Charlie. So the way we told each other part, Big Charlie, then I was Little Charlie. What the hell did they call the Rosati Charlie? He was called Little Charlie. I forget what they used to call me, because I was a little bigger than him. He was shorter than me. And uh, we used to always go together. So here we are, three Charlies together, you know. And we went together for the longest time. This, this Charlie Rosati and I, we went to school together. After school, we used to go to the park, play ball, or do whatever we had to do. But he always came up the house for me if I wasn't at his house. And off we'd go. Because so, he didn't help out much in, his, in the business with his father. It was Sammy, it was Joe, it was Henry, and the